All right. Uh, so currently, I work for VMware. Uh, insert quick plug for Tanzu. Therefore, I can expense this. There we go. Um, <laughs> We want to have a conversation about that, but uh, uh, a lot, what my day job really is is working with other folks that that have generally are currently in a kind of a C-suite title or a VP title, and kind of talking through transformations and frankly how you also deal with uh, uh, this does what is basically in the healthcare environment a, a black swan event, right? How would you deal with with something like this uh, on the next one? Um, but who am I? Uh, uh, you know, my, my favorite saying of the pandemic is a lot of people got a puppy, we went and bought an entire farm. <laughs> um, if anybody wants to talk about the challenge of trying to uh, miniaturize lower WAN devices to track activities of chickens, believe it or not, that's, that's what I'm doing in my free time. Um, also a board member of, of FIRST Robotics, uh, which is, is one of the coolest things uh, uh, I get to do. Uh, those are all pictures from the, the world championships that we were lucky enough to be able to have this year. Uh, down the lower right, uh, kids standing up in the, in the stands cheering is actually the first ever team from Libya. Um, and they, they actually kind of had to do it under the, the table, given politics and, and, and stuff. Um, but the logistics they had to do, given export re restrictions and, and just their ability to come over, uh, one of the coolest things I, I've ever been a part of. Um, because this is us, this is what we referred to at our house as our COVID flight. So anytime we could have people over, uh, uh, you know, do the outdoor thing when the, when the weather allowed. This is what we had. By the way, Total Wine and More did have a bug in their system that if you went in and said, redo my last order between visits, three times it, it like crashed. So uh, that's fixed now, by the way. Uh, so, you know, that, that was fun to fly to find out. Oh. Um, I do want to say, I'm going to kind of talk, uh, 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 you know, not kind of. I'm absolutely going to talk about the pandemic, right? And for, uh, I don't want to lose track of, of the, the human toll and impact of that. Um, but also, if, if, if you know, folks have a, a, a reaction of, of any kind of, of this topic, by all means, you're not going to insult me by, by stepping out or, or things like that. But I just kind of want to give a heads up. Um, so what was my position in all of this? Uh, at the time, I was the, the CIO of, of Primero Blue Cross. Um, health insurer uh, for Washington and Alaska had, had the uh, blues. Um, and so this was a very interesting, you know, kind of from this perspective. Uh, I, I'll, I'll also jump forward and say working for a health insurance company does not win you a whole lot of popularity points. <laughs> um, I, I, I share what I'm going to guess is a large reaction about the U.S. healthcare system and that it's fundamentally broken. Um, you know, in, in, in my belief, right, MFA, right, it's not only an acronym that I think a lot of us think about protecting our account, but sure it could probably go a long way to protecting our health uh, uh, as well. This talk is not an advocation uh, uh, for Medicare for all, and I'm happy to share my opinions from, from kind of the, the inside of that. But Primero Blue Cross, we're based in Seattle, um, and if you kind of go back to the, uh, you know, put on your way back machine, we were the area that was first publicly in the United States uh, uh, dealing with COVID. Now, also want to stipulate what we quickly learned is New York City was already having a big battle and we just didn't know it at the time. But from a organization's a government response, those kind of things, we ended up being the tip uh, of that spear uh, for, from that perspective. Largely, what time frame am I talking about? I'm really talking about the absolute beginning, right? You know, from the whole kind of January, December, January, when this thing started, you know, you started hearing stories about it, really through kind of the March time frame and, and April time frame. After that, it becomes much more of a, uh, you know, a U.S., a national story and, and everything uh, related to that. Uh, big thanks to the Seattle Times. I really used a lot of their archives to kind of put the timeline back together. In January, I think this was pretty consistent around the United States. This wasn't something that was, was unique uh, uh, to the Seattle area at this time. It was trying to figure out what this thing was, right? We're hearing stories out of China. We're absolutely seeing the uh, uh, spread through other parts uh, um, of the world, including Europe at the time. What do we even do about this? 
Right. One thing that is, I think, not widely known or, or understood in the relationships of, of you know, the, the U.S. healthcare system, health insurers, and frankly something I didn't know until I was working uh, for them for a long time, are really also seen as a place where employers especially go for advice, right? If you think about the primary customers in the U.S. system of, of you know, major, like Blue Cross, Blue Shield, we largely sold to employers, right? Amazon and Microsoft were two of our customers, for example. What that really results in is a lot of those employee benefits options suddenly call the health insurance company, which is accurate, like we've got doctors and nurses, actually more doctors and nurses work for us than a lot of the providers, but insert that's probably backwards, but, but it is a reality. Um, and so calling us for advice. And so we're literally trying to figure it out on the fly too, right? And this is the time, like that one article says, right, what was the best thing you could do to avoid coronavirus was wash your hands. Now washing your hands is a good fundamental like thing we should all do all the time anyway. So I'm glad we're all doing that more. But this is something that in hindsight looks so crazy, but it is literally what we thought and what, and what we knew um, at the time. Also, I'll just say from a regular business perspective, we started triggering our business continuity plans. And I know we were far from alone uh, uh, in that. Like, what were we going to start to do if this came through? And I'll say our plans were pretty good. They just didn't go far enough. And I think that was, you know, how do you get people home, right, which we'll talk about in a few minutes and uh, uh, things like that. The other thing is the supply chain, I will say, was real at this point. So from my CIO perspective, I was worried at the time about things like how was I going to do server or laptop refreshes or, or network switches and things. Because of the, the shutdown in Asia at that point, it had already started to become really hard. Now, no idea of what the supply chain would become right, for everything you know, pretty, pretty quick after that. But this was, I, I will say, while we were trying to answer the questions, we didn't know how severe this was going to be at, the, at that point. So we're trying to give advice, but frankly, we're just trying to figure out almost how to keep you know, our own operations going uh, as we went through it. And then it happened. Um, first case in the state of emergency, this is the, the governor's uh, uh, proclamation. Uh, Snohomish County to, uh, and you know, because you'll see a bunch of references to counties. King County is the county that Seattle is in, very large county. Uh, Snohomish is north, city, or thing you may know about that is Everett. They build some airplanes up there. Um, so the big airplanes. I hear King County yelling at me going, oh, but the 737's built there. Anyway, um, so Snohomish County is the, is the county north, and then Pierce County is the county south in Tacoma, hence Seattle, Tacoma Airport, right, from that. But uh, Snohomish County has the, has the first case. Um, and this is, you know, it, it, you went from theoretical to real at this point. But it was still just one. Right? The state of emergency starts to cause uh, a bunch of things to happen in the background. When you get into states of emergency, uh, things like, frankly, how you know, testing was going to be paid for and all of that, already some of those plans were starting to be put in place. Right? How do you make sure that not, some doctor does not think they need a pre-authorization right, to, 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 to treat? And again, we can have all sorts of discussions about whether prior authorization is a thing we should have. But um, you know, how do we start to really free that up? And, and make sure this, this system can go. It was only a week later, frankly, and I will say this, more than anything, is, is when reality hit. Um, the Kirkland Life Care Center, uh, which is an a assisted living, nursing home type situation, uh, up in Kirkland, off the east side, kind of in the tech corridor of Seattle, uh, significant outbreak within there, right, and, and spreads like wildfire. What I will say brought it home to us even more as a business, I mean, obviously we get how serious it is and all of that, was actually the firefighters and, and why that mattered, right? So suddenly you had the firefighters that responded, not only a few of them started to get sick, but then they all had to isolate, right? That quickly led to uh, uh, 12 Primera employees having to be isolated because they were spouses or partners. Right? And, and because this was happening in our community, what we saw in our office was suddenly people not able to come to work. Knock on wood, in the beginning, we didn't have any illnesses uh, with that. But the, the, all the logistics, all the business continuity things you think about start to become 
very real. And again, we were kind of in the first ones of this. What do we do about this? Like, uh, how, how do we, A, make sure everybody stays safe, first and foremost. Two, make sure we can respond. Because again, our phone lines are blowing up, right? From everybody from Joe's Plumbing to, to Amazon and, and Microsoft calling and saying, what should we do, right? What, as a, you know, we do. A, a, a good thing, and I'll, I'll explain some of these pictures in a minute, was how I will say everybody really worked together. So the county called us, um, being the, the large health insurer there, and they also called Amazon and Microsoft. And I'll remember that call. We were uh, uh, in our kind of executive boardroom, meeting room, uh, where we were in Primera when, when little Jeff Rowe got the phone call. And the question was, would you please send all your people home? And would you talk, you know, between the three of you, would you all send everybody home? Because it would make it okay for everybody else. Right? If, if Amazon and Microsoft, who are, you know, the big employers, yes, Boeing, you exist too, um, in, in, you know, Seattle will send people home, it makes it okay for others, right, to, to start to figure this out. Uh, and so we did. I, I will say uh, uh, the, the person in the hospital bed that you can't see his face is because I promised him I wouldn't is, is my son. Um, uh, ironically, I, I don't actually know the word, he had such a significant sinus infection at this time, he needed surgery. And so, you know, all your worst fears as a parent because is it a sinus infection? Is it COVID? Because again, we didn't, you know, you can, didn't have a test at that point. Um, he was, uh, uh, his surgery was the very last day before elective uh, care shutdown. Uh, but that is where I was trying to kind of help lead getting from a technology perspective, everybody home was in the, the waiting room of that. But that picture is right after he came out of surgery. So uh, he's quite high, to be honest. <laughs> um, and so I promised him I, I, I wouldn't sh show that picture. Um, that far picture is actually our, our Primera, uh, uh, the lobby of, of one of the, the, the technology buildings. And that's like rolls of bubble wrap, boxes, tape, you know, because it was like, we don't know what everybody needs, but go, right? Pack what you need. And it's hard to believe at the time we thought this would be like a six week thing, right? You know, we're just going to go home for six weeks. Uh, uh, no, that didn't happen. Um, I didn't say in my intro, uh, you know, I, started my career journey uh, in the Navy and submarines. Um, you know, we're getting home, we're trying to uh, uh, do things. So, so the, the symbol on the right is the submarine, and it's very accurate about submarines, including the grammatical error, like nothing right, lands the submarine's home. Um, you know, our fun with, with Marines, where's Meg, so I know where she is before she gives me the finger. Um, <laughs> and then, of course, bread baking. For the record, I was baking bread before, but we, we all started now. Um, something I, I will say we underestimated um, from a, a, I would say a health industry, not just Primera in the, in the Northwest, but while, and where this really started to become a black swan event was the um, elective care shutdown. And we didn't know, right? When we say elective care, by the way, that's not like, oh, I just want to go get Botox or something. Right, the, the things that are, are elective care are things that are not immediately life impacting. Meaning if you aren't having a heart attack, it can wait. My son's surgery, despite how strong of a need it was, would not have been able to happen under this. So not only do you have some, some health impacts, and I'll talk about those in a minute, but you have a financial impact to, to that industry, right? Elective care makes up 50 to 60% of the revenue of providers. And when I mean provider, I mean I think about anybody that does care. Right? A lab, a hospital, but also doctor's offices. Think about general practitioners that maybe aren't part of a, uh, a large uh, you know, hospital system or things like that. They're really just a small business. They provide an incredibly important function in keeping us all going right? and, and taking care of us. But suddenly, they have no revenue. And there wasn't any facility to fund that. Right? So, so I have the Primera press release. I promise you there was a bunch of other payers and everybody else. We started fronting money as fast as we could, right? Um, this is why you have reserves as an insurance company, so you can tap into that savings account when you need to. But this wasn't, hey, we had to spend $100 million in, in you know, claims benefits. This is, no, please take this money so you stay in business, right? Um, how do we keep this system running? 
right? Because we also, at the time, you know, by now, we've started to realize our whole estimates about being home for six weeks, that, 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 that wasn't really a thing. But then you start to ask the question, well, how long do I keep elective care shut down? Right? And again, from a, a revenue perspective, even large hospital systems were starting to get nervous. Right? Uh, an indication of that is, and I, I didn't, I was going to do it, and last night I was doing something else. Um, I was going to put uh, the chart up here. If you start to look at the bond market related to provider systems, you could start to see their, their ratings right, go down because people were starting to wonder were they going to be able to repay their debts. Um, luckily, it didn't get that close to the brink, but it was enough that I can tell you there was some pretty interesting converse, what if type conversations uh, um, going on. Um, what worries me going forward, per personally, I mean, I, I think structurally we've, we've learned a lot in the healthcare system, even around the financing and, and uh, uh, you know, what providers should do, right, what their reserves, what their continuity plans should be for uh, black swan events that have impact just, you know, having to shut things down and things like that. But there are a whole lot of people missed a whole lot of tests. Right? And, and as an entire healthcare industry, whether you are a, uh, an insurer, a provider, anybody else, we, we've spent years right, getting people comfortable to go get right, their breast exams, colorectal exams, and look, not, none of those are fun. None of those are things that everybody's like, yay, colonoscopy, yes. But they're really fucking important, okay? And we missed a lot of them, right, the percentages, right? Uh, uh, breast exams down over 90% in, in uh, 2020, right? 90%. Nine out of 10 people that would have gotten them didn't go get them. That's a huge number. Um, we're starting to see some of them come back, but we're very, very concerned about who's fallen in those cracks, who's, who's missed. Uh, and, you know, also, frankly, who's now going to have a discovery and it's, you know, a year later than it would have been anyway or two years later or whatever the case may be. Um, so my homework for all of you is to go get those tests that nobody likes to talk about. They're kind of uncomfortable to talk about, maybe even a little embarrassing, but they're really fucking important, and you need to go get them done. From here, we, I would say we kind of just achieved a new normal, and more importantly, there was a new national system in place. Uh, there's these magical things called ICD codes, right? That's That's every little, like... You know, the fact that you got a sliver in your right big toe has an ICD code different than, you know, you got one in your left toe kind of thing. Um, we started to actually have to create these for, for COVID and coronavirus, as, you know, the industry did. Um, a lot of just technology fun at that point about how do you update your systems at a rapid rate to keep up with that. But from there, it was kind of a national perspective. But that's my view uh, of the, the, the initial pandemic. Um, sleep well. <laughs> the system is... is, is, is you know, I, I, I would say, okay, um, you know, I think it's okay to talk about, you know, the risk that the, the healthcare system had from a, just a structural perspective now that we know that I, I think we've largely uh, uh, corrected that even for the going forward. That's it.